we are going to practice conversion between concentration units. We have a number of concentration units that we can be using, so we have a number of conversions that can be done. You know, I'm not going to show all of them in this video here, but I'm going to show the general procedure. Um, we often have to do a unit conversion, get pressure units, uh, concentration units in one value, and for a different property that we're trying to calculate, we need it in a different value. When we do our conversions, we often need density. So we try to just give that as a general rule, and if we don't need it. Um, so we want to see what we have, see what we need, and then try to plot, find the path to go from what we have to what we need. So we're going to start with um, a solubility. So solubility of iodine at 50 Celsius is uh, one gram per 1,280 mLs. So solubility is often grams per 100 mLs, but sometimes, uh, especially for these lower solubility things, uh, they'll give it, in this case, they'll give it one gram and what the volume that that one gram is dissolving. In this case, we want to know what this molarity is. So for molarity, we're going to need moles of the iodine and total volume of the solution. So generally, for these conversions, we have to assume an amount of solution or solvent. And uh, it doesn't matter what we assume. It won't change the answer. But some assumptions will be a little bit easier to handle than others. So generally, I look at what's given and then I make my assumption based on that. So in this case, we have a one gram for 12 ADMLs. So I'm just gonna assume that we have 12 ADMLs. That means we have one gram of iodine. So we need to turn our one gram into moles. So we divide it by the molar mass of I2. We get to 3.94 times 10 to minus three moles of iodine. We need volume, or well, we already have volume, we just convert our 1280 milliliters into liters, that's 1.28 liters. So moles divided by liters, and now we end up with 0.00308 molarity of iodine. Okay, so if we have 10%, 10%, the WW is weight and weight, it means we're dealing with a mass percent. Calcium chloride solution, aqueous, so we know it's in water. What is the molarity of it? The density is 1.04. So to get molarity, we need moles of calcium chloride and liters of solution. Since it's a mass uh, percent, it's easiest to assume some type of mass. 100 grams, 10 grams, 1 gram, 1,000 grams. It won't change the answer. Um, so right here, I'm assuming 100 grams. So 10% of 100 grams means we have 10 grams of the calcium chloride. So we need moles of it. So we divide it by its atomic mass, the molecular mass. And we get uh, 0 0.0901 moles of calcium chloride. We need liters of solution. So we have grams of solution. We have density. So Mass divided by um, density will give us 96.2 milliliters. That's 0 0.0962 liters. Now we can get our molarity at 0 0.0901 moles divided by the 0 0.0962 liters will give us 0.937 molarity of calcium chloride. So if we have 3.5 molarity of sodium chloride, Aqueous, so we know it's in water. What mass percent is the sodium chloride? We have a density of 1.03 grams per ml. So for mass percent, we need mass of sodium chloride and mass of solution. We're starting with molarity moles per liter. So I'm just going to assume one liter here. So one liter times the 3.5 molarity gives us 3.5 moles of sodium chloride. We'll need mass of it. So Take the moles multiplied by the 
look at the weight of it and we get 205 grams of sodium chloride. In the massive solution, we have one liter of it, so multiply by the density. And I'm doing a little trick here. So the grams per ml is equivalent, directly equivalent to kilograms per liter. Uh, so the number never changes when we convert from grams to grams per ml to kilograms per liter. So I do my liters times my 1.03 kilograms per liter using 1.03 kilograms. Shall convert into grams, a um, thousand and thirty grams. So now I have a mass of sodium chloride, mass of solution. So the 205 grams of sodium chloride divided by 1030 grams of solution times 100 percent is 19.9 percent of sodium chloride. Taking that 3.5 molarity sodium chloride solution again, what molality is it? So molality is moles per kilogram, so we need moles of sodium chloride, kilograms of water, not the whole solution, kilograms of water. So since it's moles per liter molarity, I'm going to assume that one liter times the 3.5 molarity gives us 3.5 moles of sodium chloride, and multiply by the molecular weight to get 205 grams. And I need the moles. I need the grams to get kilograms of water. So I take my one liter, multiply by the density, and I get 1.03 kilograms, 1030 grams of solution. Now I do the solution, 1030 grams minus the 205 grams of sodium chloride. Now I have my water, 825 grams of water, which is 0.825 kilograms. So I have my moles and my kilograms. So I Take 3.5 moles of sodium chloride, divide it by the 0.825 kilograms of water, and have 4.2 molality of sodium chloride in this solution. Let's do a couple more. Okay, in this case, we have a 2.7 molality uh, aqueous glucose solution. We want to know what the mole fraction of glucose is. The density is 1.04 grams per ml. So mole fraction means we need moles of glucose and total moles. We have a molality starting point. So that's moles per kilogram of water. So I'm going to assume one kilogram of water. I'm going to need total moles, so I'm going to take that one kilogram of water, turn it into moles. Kilogram, turn it into grams, divide by the molecular weight of water, 55.5 moles of water. Then I take the 2.7 molality, moles per kilogram, multiply by the kilograms of water, and we get 2.7 moles of the glucose. So now I have both moles, I add them together, I get 58.2 total moles. Now I do the moles of the glucose divided by the total moles, and that gives 0 .4, 0 0.046 mole fraction of glucose. Okay, so uh, another one we have um, aqueous sucrose solution with a mole fraction of 0.13. You want to know what the molality is. Molality is moles per kilogram, so we need moles of the sucrose kilograms of water. We're starting off with mole fractions, so I'm going to assume one mole total. Multiply by the mole fraction gives 0.13 moles of sucrose. So I have my moles and I need to work toward uh, kilograms. So the moles of water is going to be uh, 1 minus 0.13. And that's because all the mole fractions will add up to 1. And since we only have two things here, the sucrose and the water, the one minus the sucrose will give us moles of water, 0.87 moles of water. We multiply by the molecular weight to get grams, 15.7 grams. We convert that into kilograms, 0 0.0157 kilograms. So now we have our moles and kilograms. 0.13 moles of sucrose divided by 0 0.0157 kilograms of water gives us 8.3 molality of sucrose. 
we're going to use a 10% calcium chloride solution, the aqueous cal calcium chloride solution for our last two here, converting to molality for the first one, SC of 1.04. So we're looking for molality, so we need moles of calcium chloride in kilograms of water. We have a mass percent, so I'm going to assume 1,000 grams. And it doesn't matter what we assume. So right down here, I'm just going to assume 100 grams. This will be different. So 1,000 grams times the 10% will give us 100 grams of calcium chloride. We need it in moles, so divided by the molecular weight of calcium chloride, we get 0.901 moles of calcium chloride. We need mass of water. So the mass of solution, 1,000 grams, subtracting so off the mass of the calcium chloride will give us mass of water, so 900 grams or 0.9 kilograms. So then we have our 0.901 moles of calcium chloride divided by the 0.900 kilograms of water, and we get a 1.00 molality of calcium chloride. On the last one, we're going for mole fraction of calcium chloride. And just to show that the difference doesn't matter, so we're assuming 100 grams here, 10% of that gives us 10 grams of calcium chloride. So for the mole fraction, we need moles of calcium chloride, moles of water, or total moles. So I'm going to turn by 10 grams of calcium chloride in the moles, divide by the molecular weight of 0 0.0901 moles of calcium chloride. I take my total mass, 100 grams, subtract off the mass of calcium chloride. That gives me 90 grams of water. Divide by its molecular weight, I get 4.9945 moles of water. And yes, I'm carrying more significant digits than I really am allowed, but I'll round down later on. So I have the moles of the calcium chloride in the water, and I add them together, I get 5.0846 moles total. So a mole fraction of the water will be the 0 0.0901 moles of calcium chloride divided by the 5.0846 total moles. And we end up with a mole fraction of calcium chloride of 0 0.0177.